right? Till now we have learned about the theory of evolution and the three evidences that support the theory of evolution. Morphological evidence, anatomical evidence and third one is vestigial evidence. In this video we are going to learn about paleontological evidence. But before we learn with the paleontological evidence, I will show you an image of a very, very famous dinosaur. So, this is that dinosaur. Now most of you might have seen this dinosaur in a very, very famous series of movies that is called the Jurassic World. Now, question may arise in your mind that what is the name of Jurassic? So, right from the formation of Earth till now, all the time of Earth is divided into different eras. And these eras are again divided into smaller periods. And out of this period, one period was Jurassic period. And in this Jurassic period, dinosaurs roam on Earth. Or they will do. That's why that period is called the Jurassic, Jurassic period. Is it understood? No. So, what is my question? that how do we exactly know that dinosaur existed in Jurassic period? But before I give you answer of first question, we have to find out answer of second question. What is that second question? How do we know that this dinosaur even existed? And answer of this question is fossils. So what are fossils? Fossils are the remnants or impressions of organisms that existed on Earth and these remnants and impressions are preserved underground or sometimes above the ground. Those remnants are called as fossils. I will repeat my definition once again. The remnants or impression of organisms that are preserved underground are called as fossils. Now let's take a look at some more fossils. Where do we get this fossil and how do we get this fossil? So most of the time we get this fossil accidentally. But as well, we get this fossil accidentally. 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 मोठे होते त्याना मोठे मोठे दात होते त्यामुळे त्या लोकांनी त्याला नाव दिले दिधी दाय पा लॅटिन मध्ये दिधी दाय त्या शब्दासाठी शब्द आहे ओव्हेंकर त्यासाठी शब्द आहे डायनो आणि पालीसाठी शब्द आहे सॉरस आणि हे दोन शब्द एक करून शब्द बनला डायनोसॉरस तर एकदा का एखाद्या ठिकाणी हे फॉसिल्स आहे ते कळलं की सायंटिस्ट त्या जागी जातात अँथ्रोपॉलॉजिस्ट मानवशास्त्र ते तिथे जातात आणि तिकडची जागा व्यवस्थित मार्क करून ते फॉसिल्स अगदी काळजीपूर्वक बाहेर काढतात so that is how we get fossil. And once we get fossil, we can easily determine the age of that fossil by a very very famous technique. That technique is called as carbon dating. So now let us learn what is the meaning of carbon dating in detail and how we can use that carbon dating for finding out age of the fossils. Suppose this is body of an organism. It could be a plant or it could be an animal. No matter a plant or animal, in body of each organism, there are two isotopes of carbon that are always present. Out of that one isotope is carbon-12 and another is carbon-14. Out of this carbon-12, it's non-radioactive and carbon-14, it's radioactive. That means the amount of carbon-12 in body of that organism will always remain constant. But as carbon-14 is radioactive because of decay, its amount will keep on decreasing. But still, the ratio of carbon-12 and carbon-14 in body of that living organism always remains fixed. Why? Because the amount of carbon-14 that has decreased because of decay, the carbon-14 is a pramant, which is a radioactive decay, but it is not a pramant. 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 परत कार्बन फोर्टीन त्या शरीर त्या प्राण्याच्या शरीरात शिरतो आणि तो रेशो नेहमी फिक्स राहतो दॅट मीन्स द रेशो ऑफ कार्बन ट्वेल्व टू कार्बन फोर्टीन ऑलवेज इन फिक्स टील दॅट ऑर्गनिझम इज लिव्हिंग बट वन्स दॅट ऑर्गनिझम टाईज दॅन इमॅजिन दिस लिव्हिंग ऑर्गनिझम इज डेड अँड इट्स बॉडीज प्रिझर्व इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फॉसिल सो नाव वॉट यू लॅपन The amount of carbon-12 will remain constant. Why? Obviously, it is non-radioactive, so it will remain constant. But now only one process will continue: decay of carbon-14. But replenishment—that means now this carbon-14 that is lost 
it will be not fulfilled again. Why? Because now that fossil is not breathing, it is not eating or it is not drinking water. And that is why, now what will happen? This ratio or fixed ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, it will start decreasing. And just by measurement of the radioactivity of this carbon-14 and by measurement of the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14, we can find out that before how many years that fossil when it was animal, it was dead. And in this way we can find out what is the approximate age of that fossil. This age is not never accurate, it is approximate. And this method is called as carbon dating and credit to discover this method goes to Willard dating. Now you know what is meaning of fossil, how the age of fossil is determined by carbon dating. Now, study of these fossils is called as paleontology. That is our actual point. And now we are actually going to learn that how this paleontological evidence supports the theory of evolution. To understand this, let us take a look at an image that is given in a book. In that image, you can see on one side, these three words are given. Cenozoic, Mesozoic and Talozoic. And in front of them, the different group of animals are written, like vertebrates and invertebrates. To understand what is the name of Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Palazoic, I will show you one more image so that you will understand it more precisely. So, here is the second image. In that image, there are three columns. In first column, again, eras are written. In middle column, the time duration is written. And in third column, the animals that existed in that era, those diagrams are written. Now, right from the form, I have told you at the beginning of the video, right from the formation of Earth till today, all the time is divided into different periods and eras. These periods and eras are known by name Palozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic era. The time before 540 million years to 248 million years, it is considered as Palozoic era. The time from or time before 248 million years to 65 million years, it is considered as the Mesozoic era. And finally, the time before 65 million years till today, it is considered as Cenozoic era. And in that diagram, which animal existed in which year, it is given. Now let us come back to origin image. So here, eras and which animal were present in that era, it is shown. So once we get a fossil in the different layers of world, the age of that fossil is determined by using carbon dating. Once we know what is the exact age of that fossil, that means before how many years that fossil was living, it existed, those fossils or those animals are placed in particular era. And when all those fossils are studied sequentially, what do we find? We find that in the deepest layer of soil or in oldest era, which is Palozoic era, the fossils that were found, they were only fossils of invertebrate. A fossil for the invertebrate show. Tacha virtual layer of the fossil, a fish like animal cell. Tacha virtual layer of the fossil, a fish like animal cell, but Tacha were over amphibian and a reptile corner. Tacha virtual layer, but it's a fossil, a shaky to reptile show. And it's a lot of origin, Maja, Sinozoic, Ira Madla layer, G soil, Tal layer of the fossil malaria. Tacha made reptiles, mammals. Adipurs, yes, Sarvanja fossil may have a layer. But yet, on Siddha Gautha, the invertebrates evolution, a whole group of vertebrates not evolved together. Invertebrates slowly evolved into vertebrate animal. And that is why this paleontological evidence, study of fossil, it supports the theory of evolution. Our fifth evidence that supports the theory of evolution is connecting it. I will show you image of a fossil. I will explain what is the meaning of fossil at the beginning of this video. Now, this is the fossil of Archaeopteryx. And this Archaeopteryx was found, fossil of this Archaeopteryx, it was found in Germany. When characteristics of this fossil were studied, then at first sight it looked like bird. So it had characteristics like presence of beak, presence of wings, body covered with feathers. But scientists were surprised to find that this same fossil also contains some characteristic of reptiles. So what are these characteristics? Beak was present, but beak was with teeth. So she made it as a dat hotel. Mala Pana Asher Hotel, Kika the Pakshi Bailan, the Pakshi Asher, Tuchin took me that by the the Joda Asher Hotel, Teoda Asher, a scientist now. Second, presence of tail. And third, on the wings of this Archaeopteryx, claws were present. Nakya. That means 
this archaeopteryx at the same time has characters of two different group of animals, reptiles and birds. But what does it indicate? It indicates that birds are evolved from reptiles. And that is why this archaeopteryx is connecting link between reptiles and birds. So how we can define connecting link? Connecting link is a group of plant or group of animal which has some morphological characters. By this morphological character, we can relate that animal with two different group of animals. But this archaeopteryx doesn't exist today. But on earth, there are still some living connecting link. And out of this different living connecting link, we are going to learn our three connecting link. And our first connecting link is peripatus. This peripatus shows characteristics of two different group of animals. All animals are divided into different groups that we are going to learn in second term. But right now only remember the name of this group. Out of that one group is called as Anilida. And in this peripatus there are some characteristics of Anilida. So what are these characters? Segmented body, thin cuticle, and presence of parapodia. But at the same time it also has some characteristics of another group of animals that is called as Arthropoda. So what are these? Open circulation and second, tracheal respiration. That means this peripatus has characteristic of two different group of animals and that is why it is called as a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. Our second connecting link is lungfish. This lungfish is a fish and it is found, or there are total six different species of this lungfish. They are found in South America, Africa and Australia. Now, it looks like a fish so it comes under the category of fish. But at the same time, it has presence of lung. Zer tumi ha lung fish pancha bahar kaadla. Tari to aramat jivun dalao shukko. Karan to baati cha fish is pramane. Gils ni shwaas gheetna. Tala doon lungs asta. Australia madha jo ghi lung fish asta. Tala madha pote single lung asta. Tumi YouTube or kiwa national geographic or. Asse pon video pao shakti ki jaycha madhe. Loka kai gata zameen khodun. Maati tumi lung fish bahar kaadla. Javari pancha kamtar ta asta. Kiwa javari sabhi talawa nade atun jata. Tavari lung fish chakka chikla darata. Chikal sukla. तरी सुधा ते हवे श्वास घर रहता है जब पुनः पाउस ये अपने आजूबाजू की माती फोड़ पुनः पानी देता अपल नेह आयुष्य सुरू करता दैट मीन्स दिस फैक्ट इंडिकेट्स दैट एम्फीबियन्स आर इवॉल्व फ्रॉम फिशेस एंड नाउ वी हैव टू लर्न अबाउट द मोस्ट स्ट्रेंजेस्ट कनेक्टिंग दैट इज कॉल एज डग बिल प्लैटिकस दिस डग बिल प्लैटिकस इट इज फाउंड इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया सत्रहशे नव्याण में सर्वप्रथम ज्यादा यूरोप मे हा नमुना पोचता है डबिल प्लैटिकस का प्रिजर्व नमुना होता तो तीकड़ा साइंटिस्ट ने तेज ऑब्जर्वेशन करता सामू टाकल कि हा चक्क खोटा प्राणी है और बदक घूस कि उंदीरा सारा मोटा प्राणी बदका से पाय अनेक प्राणी के अवय एकत्र हा नमुना तैयार के प्राणी शक्य नहीं है पन मात्र पूर्ण जगह मिल कि खरोखर ऑस्ट्रेलिया मधे य प्रकार प्राणी अस्तित्व है आता याचा मधे कौन कौन ती लक्षण हैं बता। In this animal there are some characteristics which belong to reptiles. That means it lays egg first. But at the same time it also shows characteristics of mammals also. So what are the characteristics of mammals? There is presence of mammary gland, presence of body hair. Okay. So this fact indicates that mammals are evolved from reptiles. So, all this connecting link indicate to the fact that animals gradually develop into different species because of the process of evolution. We are going to learn our sixth and last evidence that supports the theory of evolution. Before we start, we have to understand what is the meaning of embryo. And you already know what is the definition of reproduction. The process in which one living thing produces another living thing like itself is called as reproduction. These reproductions are of two types, asexual and sexual. In sexual reproduction, there is a process or step. That step is called as fertilization. What happens in this fertilization? Male gamete and female gamete. Male gamete is produced by male and female gamete is produced by female reproductive system. So both gametes combine with each other, fuse with each other and they produce a single cell. That single cell is called as zygote. This zygote develops into embryo and this embryo is something that looks like an organism. So we can say that what is the meaning of embryo? Embryo is the first developmental stage in the life of any organism. Embryonic stages of 
eight different vertebrates pig salamander man chicken fish rabbit and tortoise what is your task when image will appear in front of you you have to find out which one is human embryo so this is the first developmental stage of embryos observe that all embryos carefully and try to find out which embryo is human embryo obviously it is impossible and why it is impossible because all eight embryos are alike manje eight cha eight embryo he ek meka sarkes dista and that is why it is not possible to identify that which one is human embryo so now let us take a look at second developmental stage so in this second developmental stage also you can tell that first two embryos are not human embryos why because they don't look like human at all but still in the remaining six embryos there are striking similarities and because that here also it is almost impossible to tell that which one is the human embryo so now let us go to third developmental stage now you can see in third developmental stage actually name is given the last embryo is human embryo but still imagine that if name is not given then also there is lot of confusion that which would be the exact human embryo now let us take a look at all three stages in combine so now observe all three stages when embryos are in their first developmental stage then all eight vertebrates they look similar to each other and this indicates to the fact that they are related with each other they have a common ancestor and they have a common origin manje पहिल्या एम्ब्रिओलॉजिकल स्टेजमध्ये हे सगळेच्या सगळे एम्ब्रिओ म्हणजे एकमेकांसारखे दिसतात अगदी तंतोतंत सारखे दिसत आहेत याच्यातला ह्युमन कोण आहे टॉर्टॉइस कोण आहे आणि अगदी पिक कोण आहे किंवा चिकन कोण आहे हे सुद्धा ओळखणं अशक्य आहे म्हणजेच यांच्यामध्ये काहीतरी रिलेशन अँड ऑल ऑफ देम दे हॅव अ कॉमन अॅसिस्टर अँड कॉमन ओरिजन अँड दॅट इज वाय दिस एम्ब्रिओलॉजिकल एव्हिडन्स सपोर्ट द थिअरी ऑफ एव्होल्युशन सो हिअर वी हॅव फिनिश ऑल ओव्हर एव्हिडन्सेस दॅट सपोर्ट द थिअरी ऑफ एव्होल्युशन